guys, CJ here, and I am finally back uh, with some more Minecraft modding tutorials. This is episode whatever, and um, this episode we're going to be finally getting our generator almost up and running. This episode is going to actually be pretty long because we have to set up our tile entity, the container, and we have to do a little more work in the DUI class, but the DUI is the easiest part which really says something. Uh, in this tutorial, what we'll accomplish is we will get the generator able to hold items, which is um, really fun. Okay, so here's our current generator GUI. So, um, basically, the parts of the GUI that we don't need. We don't need... Darn you. We don't need that part right there. We don't need either of those. Or this one. We could actually move this. There we go, that's pretty central. Um, let's just fill that back in. Um, once again, I'll leave this for a download in the description so you guys can follow along. So, uh, now that we've fixed our GUI, that's bueno. I'm in the tile entity. First thing we want to do is use the correct keyboard. We want to set this to implements I inventory. Basically, this allows it to actually hold things in its inventory. I haven't used this keyboard enough, it's not dusty. Oh, gosh. Okay, so we'll want to add our unimplemented methods, of which there are many. Oh, fear not, there's a lot to do. Um, so I'm just gonna clean these up a little bit. Okay, there we go, that was nice and easy. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have an array of private item stack type and this is going to actually be what we're holding and um, what we'll want to do is inside of a constructor is we first want to initialize this array then we want to fill it with values because of the new way item stack works I'm actually going to use the size of the inventory so your size of your inventory is determined by why are you opening in here again? Oh well See, we've got one slot in here that belongs to the actual inventory. These ones belong to the player. But this one slot belongs to the inventory, so the size is one. And now, we'll want to do a for loop on the inventory. And what we'll want to say is that the inventory at i is going to equal item stack dot empty. So previously, you wouldn't have had to do this for loop right here because uh, item stacks could be null, but now, for some reason, item stacks are not allowed to be null, or your game will error. So, we cannot have that. Anyway, the name, this is going to be the translatable name. I'm just going to use container dot generator. Has custom name, we're going to leave that to false because we don't want to allow the uh, player to uh, give it a name. And so now we're going to return a public I text component. This is going to be get display name. And we will return a new text component translation. And we'll just pull through get name from up here. We don't have to import that as well. So you can see this green arrow. That means you typed it correctly. Good job. Um, so get inventory size. That is good. Is empty. Um, so we're going to return true. And then we're going to do a for loop. For int i equals zero, i is less than inventory dot length i plus plus, and then we just say if get stack in slot i is not equal to item stack dot empty, then we return false. So basically, we loop through the entire inventory. If there is an item in there that is not empty, it's full, or it's not full, but it's not empty. And if we never come across one, we return true. Okay, so now we're right to where the uh, get stack in slot is. So we'll say in if index is less than zero, or index is greater than or equal to get size of inventory, we'll want to return item stack dot empty because your uh, it was out of bounds. Else we'll want to return index. Okay, here comes our first really fun method. And um, we'll want to make sure this returns item stack dot empty, not null. First if statement is if get stack in slot index is not equal to item stack dot empty, 
then item stack stack. We'll define this later. So if get stack in slot index dot get count, this is the number of items in a stack is less than or equal to this count over here. We're going to say stack is equal to get stack in slot index set inventory slot contents at index to item stack dot empty. And then we want to make dirty, which means the game is going to um, mark, mark dirty, I'm sorry. Mark dirty, which means the game is going to uh, save the NBT. And then finally, we want to return the stack. Else, stack is equal to get stack in slot of index, and we want to split it. So if get stack in slot index dot get count is less than or equal to zero, set inventory slot contents at index to item stack dot empty. If it's not, we want to set inventory slot contents at index to get stack in slot index. And I misspelled index there, which is fine. So once again, we're going to mark it dirty. And we're going to return the stack. So now we want to do remove stack from slot. This is simpler. So our item stack stack is going to be get stack in slot of index. Then set inventory slot contents at index to item stack dot empty. And then we'll want to return stack. And here we go to the set inventory slot contents that we've been using everywhere. We're going to do our standard if index is less than zero or index is greater than or equal to get size of our inventory. We'll return. Since this is a void method, it returns nothing. It just kills the method. So now we do, we check if this stack is not empty and that the count is greater than the inventory stack limit, which is 64. We can go ahead and set that up there. Stack.set count to get inventory stack limit. Next if statement, if stack is not equal to item stack dot empty and stack dot get count, that's not it is equal to zero, stack equals item stack dot empty. And so then our inventory at index is equal to stack. Then of course, we want to mark dirty. So now is usable by the player. Uh, we want to make sure the player is within eight blocks, which is a little annoying to do, but we can deal with it. So do world dot get tile entity at our current tile entity position. If that's equal to this and player dot get distance squared of pause dot add 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 is less than or equal to 64. So this right here basically checks the square of the distance since it's squared. 8 squared is 64. So open inventory and close inventory are just events we can use if we need to. Luckily we don't. So is item valid for slot? Yes. This allows us to put any type of item in there. For now, we'll allow it. Later we can change it. Get field and get field count. Really don't have to mess with those. At least not yet. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, all that leaves us with is clear, which is really easy for int i equals zero, i is less than once again, the size of our inventory, I++, plus plus. we'll say set inventory slot contents of our index, and we'll want to empty those out. Okay, there we go, we've got a tile entity that has an inventory. That was nice and easy, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and go to the container now. Okay, so we're going to have a constructor. 
for our generator. This is going to take an I inventory, which is the player's inventory, and our tile entity generator, which you'll remember implements I inventory. Now up here, we're actually going to want to keep a hold of our tile entity. Let's call it generator. So generator equals tile entity. Now this right here is where we are going to add the slots for inventory that you can actually see and interact with. So first, I'm going to add the slot for the single inventory slot we have. So you do that just by calling new slot, and then you want your inventory, which is our tile entity. But let's go ahead and use our generator variable because we made it, might as well use it. The index of the slot, which is zero because it's the first and only slot. Now our X and Y values. Let's open up our McDoohickey again. So if we look right here, we'll see the X value just inside of it is 80 and 53. Okay. There we go. So we'll want to import this from inventory.slot. There we go. All right, that's the single slot added to the generator. Now, because of the way things work, we have to add in all the slots for the player as well. But we have four loops. So for int y is equal to zero, y is less than three, y plus plus. We're gonna have another for loop inside of this. X is equal to zero. X is less than nine because this is the player's inventory. Now we add slot to container. Once again, new slot. Now this is the player's inventory. And to get the index, you do x plus y times 9 plus 9. Seems simple enough. Now our x value is, so let's see where our x value starts. Where does it start? Right here. Our x starts at 8, so we will do 8 plus x times 18. 18 is how large each slot is in pixels. And next, the y value. I didn't actually even check. Well done, CJ. Um, 84. OK, so it's 84 plus y, once again, times 18. By the way, I'm writing these in shortened annotation. You could write it like this if you feel more comfortable like that. I just like it to look neat. So now we have to do the hot bars. So int x equals 0. x is less than 9. x plus plus. No for loop. Add slot to container. Once again, this is the player. OK, the way the player works, the hot bar is 0 to 8. And the inventory is 9 to 45. So that's how these work. So x is simply our index here. Now, um, if we open our image once again, for the final time, you can see that this is 8, 142. So we're at 8 plus x times 18, and I think it was 142, is the y value. And that is not going to change, because the y value does not change. OK, well done. We now have slots. And we're 20 minutes into filming. I don't know how long it's going to be in the end, but that's just keeping track. So we have another method to get to work with if transfer, transfer, transfer stack in slot entity player. We get the player and the from slot. So this is the index of the previous slot. This is another one of those fun methods you're going to love. So item stack previous equals item stack dot empty. And at the end here, we just want to return previous if all else fails. So slot slot equals slot inventory slots dot get from slot. Seems simple enough. Size is our generator tile entity. Get size of the inventory. Seems simple enough. So if our slot is not equal to null and our slot dot get, oh gosh slot.get has stack, so that makes sure there's actually a stack in it, obviously. Now item stack current equals slot.get stack. Previous is going to be equal to a copy of the current. Now if our from slot is less than our size, 
We're going to have enough another if statement if not merge item stack current the inventory size and then our size plus 36 and then true then we'll want to return item stack dot empty okay um, we have an else we're going to do another merge so this basically is going from the inventory to the player this is going from the player to the inventory item stack once again we're going to go current but we're going to go from zero to size this is going to be false then once again if it doesn't work we're returning an empty item stack so a new if statement if current dot get count that's not count is equal to zero slot dot put stack item stack dot empty so that empties it out else slot dot on slot change that just alerts the slot hey something's taking place so if current dot get count is equal to the previous dot get count we're going to once again return an item stack dot empty and slot dot on take player and our current item stack so this is a really annoying method it's complicated you don't technically really have to know what it does because this method will work for any sized inventory okay so that was our container now finally guess what we get to do the GUI hooray we'll fix this later but in our generator <clears throat> this is all good right here except we want to get rid of this and this is going to be I inventory again without a capital V this is once again the player and then we have our tile entity generator which is our We'll call it tile entity because we need the generator elsewhere. So we're going to return a new container generator with the player and tile entity. Okay, so we're also going to want two private variables one for the inventory and one for the tile entity. And we'll just assign these in the constructor like that. Um, so we're already drawing the background from before, but now we get to draw the foreground, which contains text. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the name from the tile entity, which is called generator. So we're going to get our display name, but we're going to get it unformatted text. So then we call the font renderer object, which is inside of the GUI class that we extend. So we draw the name. And so our X value is 88 minus font renderer obj get string width divided by two. Then the Y value is six. And we pick our color. Uh, the, the default color is uh, 404040. This is a hexadecimal color, just like you'd find in CSS and HTML. But I'm going to use BF, BF, BF because that is the invert of the default. And also I wrote split string. It's just normal string. So I'm going to copy that and paste it. Uh, I'm going to change the text to inventory dot get display name dot get unformatted text. I'm going to change the X value to eight and the Y value to 72. Now let's go back into our GUI handler class, which I've gone ahead and emptied out. So I'm going to use a switch statement, which isn't something I would normally do, but in this specific case, heh, it can be pretty good, or pretty useful, I should say. If you don't want to do it, you can still use your if statements and such, but I'm going to. So in the case that it's the ID, we want to return the new container generator with the inventory of the player, as well as a tile entity which we get at the cur current position, which is new block pause x, y, and z. So actually, we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste the same thing down into the client side, except we're going to return a GUI generator instead of a container. OK, that's the GUI handler. Now back in our block, I've gone ahead and changed this method a little bit. Previously, we had this setup. What this does is this passes the player's position. 
But if you remember in our GUI handler, we're relying on this position to get a tile entity. So what we actually want to do is pass it the blocks position, which we can do extracting it from the block pause. And we also want to make sure the world is not remote because when it is called on the server, it gets pushed to the client thanks to automatic packet handling. And finally, the last change that I almost missed is we're never actually saving the contents of the tile entity to the disk. So let's do that. Public nbt tag compound write to nbt, nbt tag compound nbt, and then going to return super dot write to nbt, nbt. Now inside of here, we're going to have an nbt tag list, list equals new nbt tag list. And then we're going to loop through the inventory, get size inventory. So if get stack in slot i is not equal to item stack dot empty, nvt tag compound stack tag equals new nbt tag compound stack tag whoops dot set byte this is going to be slot and we're just going to convert the slot to a byte spell that right so get stack in slot i dot write to nbt and this is going to be written to the stack tag and finally we append the stack tag then outside of our for loop nbt dot set tag items to this list tag we had. Okay, now we have to read it. So it's public void read from nbt, nbt tag compound nbt, super dot read from nbt, nbt. It's so back above the super, nbt tag list. We're going to read from a list, which is just as fun as writing. List equals now we have to pull it from the nbt, so nbt.get tag list items of type 10. Type 10 refers to nbt tag compounds, which if you remember is what we populate the list with. For int i, now we're going to loop through the list because we don't add every single slot into the list. We only added slots that were full of items, or not empty, I should say. So let's get an nbt tag compound uh, stack tag equals list dot get compound at i. So we get the slot stack tag dot get byte. This is slot. And you can use the ampersand a single time. Now this has some sort of computation to do in converting between bytes to ints and such. Uh, you don't technically have to know what this does, at least not yet. If you really wanted to, you can look up the Java ampersand selector and see what it does. So set inventory slot contents of slot to a new item stack and just give it a stack tag. Oop, let's spell it right and it might work. Okay, theoretically, we should have now a working block. Oh, one final thing. Inside of your language file, you're gonna go ahead and have to add container.generator because if you remember, in our tile entity generator, that is the name we return. So I'll call it something like generator. Alrighty, so let's check. Tile uh, tutorial generator. Oh, I already have one. Place it down and, okay, we see the names in inventory. And we can hover over all of the slots and they're in the right places and all right, we close it, we can reopen it. We put an item in there, we close it, we re reopen it. The item's still in there. We reload the world. The item's gone. Now the reason the item is gone is because I wrote this method wrong. If you don't see the green arrow, you did not write it right either. There we go, now we have a green arrow. Okay, so we place something in there. We reload the world. And boom, there it is. We break the block, 
nothing drops. Let's fix that. Okay, so what we're going to do is override the break block method. So world, world, block pause, pause, and I block state. State. So we're gonna call super.breakBlock at the end. Now inside of here, we're going to get the tile entity generator at this position. So then, inventory helper dot drop inventory items. So world, our position, and we pass it our generator. So let's try this. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get our tutorial generator. Place it down, pop something in there. Boop, there we go. Okay, um, so thank you guys for watching. If you noticed, there was about a one week jump in the clips in this episode. See if you can find that. Um, I also hope you enjoyed the new intro music and outro music. If you did, uh, songs are in the description. Uh, so, thanks for watching. <laughs>